Emma and welcome back to my sewing vlog she loves to make. Because I added a chili in the buttons cocoa to my make nine list, I've decided today to film a sew with me for the chili in the buttons cocoa and I'm making a funnel neck uh, dress option. I've cut out all my pattern pieces in preparation and I'm making a size four and five. So I've got measurements within um, the size four range and I am a bust 36, a waist 32 and a hip 42. So I've graded from a four uh, at the bust to a five waist and hip and I'm making it in a lovely red uh, Ponte Roma fabric. You can use a uh, different kind of jersey as well, like a cotton jersey. And yeah, I'm just really excited to make it um, and hopefully wearing it to the pink and red um, party on Instagram. Um, so in the pattern instructions, uh, you need to have a matching thread, which I've got threaded up on my Janome 3050 sewing machine, which I highly recommend, by the way. Um, so this is a Guterman thread, which is the best quality for sort of moving through um, the machine without jamming or anything. I have done a tension test um, for the zigzag stitch. So that is a 1.5 by 2.5 um, with zigzag stitch and it's all in the instructions so if you buy the pattern you'll get all the instructions and know what to do with that. Um, I've also got some ribbon so because of the pink and red theme I've gone for a, a lovely pink ribbon for my shoulders that's to stabilise the shoulders and I've also got a ballpoint needle in, in my machine so I'm using a 70 um, 10 ballpoint class A needle um, and that's the pack so it's a fresh out of the pack one uh, needle in the machine and I've threaded up the bobbin with my red coordinating thread so I'll be using that to sew up my side seams and then I've got my uh, overlocker this is the Janome um, 9200D and this was the overlocker that I told you about that arrived in the post with the bottom slightly not. So it has had a new bottom plate on it and I threaded it up with this lovely pink, again with the pink and red theme, um, this pink overlocker thread. I'll probably do the shoulder seams as well um, in this lovely pink. Um, but the actual neckline and getting that in and joining the shoulders I'll do on the first machine so that's really exciting um, it's really nice I find to sit in the evenings and sew up a project this is something I've made before it was the first pattern I ever made and so it holds a really special place in my heart so I went on a sewing course uh, with Make It On 40 in Plymouth and uh, a group of us all made a cocoa when I made it the first time it was a little small um, so I will be adjusting my side seams when I sew them up on the overlocker, uh, which will sew those pieces together, but also finish the edges as well. So uh, yeah, this is my first sew along and I'm really excited to share the whole experience with you and chat away as I'm doing it. So I'm just going to pop um, all my things to one side there. And... Um, wanted to show you my beautiful fabric. So this is the Beatrice Ponte Roma fabric from Satisfaction. Just love it. It's really, really cool. Mm -hmm. It's so soft as well, which I'm loving. So I always, just to explain, when I cut my patterns out, I always keep the pieces with the piece, just in case I forget which piece um, it corresponds to in the pattern. So this is my funnel neck band piece. And I just wanted to show you. It's just so lovely. The texture on it is just great. 
I'm, I'm really happy with this fabric and it cuts really easily so I used my dressmaker shears they are these rose gold shears I have been using a rotary cutter for a few years but I decided that I wanted to just switch to some really nice shears and actually it's more convenient than putting the mat out and the whole performance of, of that um, but weights are still really helpful I find in just using a few pins then so it just speeds up the whole process and I actually did that whilst I was watching The Serpent on BBC iPlayer. If you get a chance to watch it, if you like the 70s, if you like a bit of a thriller, um, then do have a watch of that because that was great. Jenna Coleman is in it and she's just amazing. So that's the um, neckband piece. I'm going to be starting with, if I can find it, and that's my... Pattern pieces. Love the sound of that um, dressmaking pattern paper. It's really cool. Um, so this is my dress back, and you can see the, the skirt will be nice and flared, like so. Just down there, and here is my front paper pattern piece that was cut on the fold. If you haven't made this pattern before, there are really good instructions for pattern layouts in Tilly's pattern. So just um, familiarise yourself with that. I didn't think you'd want to watch me cut out the whole pattern. Um, there we go. So this is the front. So you can see it's got that scoop on it um, and that's been cut. So there's some notches there to mark um, where you're joined to the other pieces as well. So I'm going to start by sewing one centimetre around the neckline to stay stitch. So that means to secure um, the neckline in place. So uh, when you sew the seams together, it doesn't pull. So the curve stays uh, nice and neat as it should do. So I'm going to get on and do that. So to start the stay stitching, I'm going to sew a straight line, so in stitch number one on my machine, I'm going to set it to, um, to hold the neckline curve in place. Um, so that is a 10 millimeter or three eighths of an inch from the raw edge to help the neckline to hold its shape. And I'm just going to do that for the front piece. It's all red, Valentine's dress is underway. And you're not back tacking at the end with a stay stitch. Um, it literally is just to hold the neckline in place. through this fabric like butter, it's brilliant. Always made a size 4 in Tilly's patterns. Find that that's a good fit for me, which is a UK 12. And I grayed out just for my hip, really. Um, between my waist and my hip. Just so that I know I've got enough fabric. Obviously with a jersey fabric, it is more forgiving. So sometimes you do need to size down. There we go. So I'll just trim the end of that. And the other end as well. So on the wrong side, our front bodice piece, just going to cut a length of ribbon, which fits in a bit more. Just use some leeway to finish it. Okay, so that's one. And I'll cut my second ribbon piece 
my ribbon is eight millimeters wide it can be six to eight millimeters wide in the instructions from the fabric edge I'll just pop a few pins in just to keep the ribbon uh, stable and I usually pop my pins in across the ribbon so they're nice neat finish I'm going to sew then the first piece of ribbon on one of the shoulders and I'm literally just going to sew over my pretty ribbon. This is my first, the inside of my shoulder seam there so you can see. So I'm going to sew the second stabilising ribbon onto the shoulder. Um, going a bit slow because of the, it's the first time that I've done this and sort of looking at the camera and chatting while I do it but there is that nice feeling of it's like sitting with my sewing friends and doing like a, a sew along knowing that there'll be people watching this and getting something out of it is really nice. Close together, so we're joining the shoulders. Next, oh, that's better. You see me better now without the sewing machine in the way. So that's my grand piece and back piece. So I'll just put a few pins in. I'm going to match my, so your notches, your little notches that you cut into the shoulder of the pattern. If you just line those up, that will make sure that the dress hangs in the right way. That's all carefully planned so where the notches go. So it's really important to use those as your guide. I love this bit joining the front to the back. I'm really loving my magnetic pin cushion, so it's kind of second hand given to me and I am so pleased with it. So I've just put the three pins in, in so this is one of my shoulders and all I'm going to do is bring my sewing machine back up on the table and just sew two shoulders and the right sides together and I'm using a 5 8 seam allowance something happened to my pedal there it's weird <laughs> started moving all on its own and I didn't even touch it <laughs> very strange something to do with my foot control error it might be because it's on an extension lead um, so I do that because I'm sewing from the table my desk is being used for working from home now but obviously it's great to be working from home and that's one of the reasons why I've done it so I haven't got um, a very long commute during a pandemic <laughs> so, um, nice to have the table so I've rearranged my sewing space backtrack a little bit um, so obviously it was all in my bedroom in the corner of the bedroom which worked for a while but actually now not working so well and I needed the desk really for the work so I got rid of some of my sewing stash 
that all went to either charity or friends or um, yeah anywhere it was useful for other people really um so that's my first shoulder sorry just got distracted by chatting away i just love the pink inside it's great so excited pink and red and take that off the table again yes yeah, so where was i i am um Yeah, so where was that? I actually brought all my um, decluttered <laughs> sewing supplies into my living room um, and planned to, so when I was working from home, which I am now, uh, planned to be able to pull the table out to cut my fabric whenever I needed to. And it's an Ikea kind of drop. Uh, leaf table so I can do that anytime I like which is great and to kind of go through my patterns and see what I actually wanted to sort my pdf patterns anyone else have a pile of pdf patterns that just kind of sit uh, somewhere <laughs> waiting to be I've ordered so many and I haven't made as many of the patterns as I thought I would so I've designed a little template um, for recording which pattern is which and I've put them all in their own envelope uh, with the little form I designed for it on the front so stuck on the front for easy access when I do actually make the patterns and I went through all my sewing magazines um, I, I gifted a lot of those uh, to other people who sew and I sorted through all my supplies so that now I've got everything really at my fingertips. So I've got my um, lace in a box, I have my uh, ribbons and my interfacing and my pattern paper all in one place on some shelves next to this table. I will do a little um, revised sewing space tour possibly for my next vlog so that you can see um, the changes but it also means that at some point if I wanted to I can well when we can when it's safe to do so I can have people in to sew and develop my sewing patterns as well so I shared my Eleonora blouse in a previous video and I've been working on kind of making some improvements to that pattern since the first make and I want to make it in a cotton lawn as well because I think it will look beautiful and yeah so that's all kind of something I knew I'd be able to do once I got the space sorted so now it's sorted I'm just over the moon of it really um, so that's my second cocoa dress shoulder all sewn up there and yeah I can move on to the next step. So I'm probably going to um, overlock those so because I've got my nice bright pink and, and why not why not indeed and I must get I need to go and get a tapestry needle in a minute so that I can thread the ends through so I personally prefer to thread in my ends from my overlocking on the seams so um, they're kind of woven into the overlocking and then they're less likely to come loose later on I know some people just like to chop them other people interface them down I think. I've heard a lot of variations of dealing with those strays um, but I choose to weave mine in that's just my preference. I'm very excited to have this new overlocker working it is much more so I did have the Singer 14 SH kind of basic overlocker which I got second hand for I think it was about 80 pounds 
and it's lasted for a long time and I was a little afraid of using the overlocker to start with um, but the more I've got into it and the more I've had to kind of look after it, service it, sort it out, um, I've got used to doing so and yeah, I felt like I was ready for an upgrade and this one luckily has the seam allowances marked on it as well. So not only has it got um, kind of a, a better quality blade, it's got the 5.8 and 1.8 um, allowances on here. So it's very easy to accurately sew the sides of your garment up. Um, so I'm going to use my overlocker to do the trimming. I'm going to line up so I don't want them too um, narrow simply because they are great at um, the seam allowances help stabilize your shoulders so don't want to lose too much so I'm going to go with the centimetre Get the correct pedal for the thing. <laughs> Got two pedals under here. Pedal power. I need a nice long end. So I've got a nice long end at the beginning and at the end so that I can get my tapestry needle in there. I've got that lovely, so I've overlocked, but I've still got that lovely finish of the ribbon underneath. Looks really nice. Love my detail. So I'm just going to flip to the other shoulder seam before I weave the ends. And I'm going to do the same. Great, so I've got my overlocking on my second shoulder. So there's my, I've got my tapestry needle, which is, let me just hold that up so you can see what they look like. They're a bit battered, but they are my tapestry needles for threading in ends. So because you've got that larger end of the needle, the larger hole, it's just so easy. them through theoretically not done this on camera before <laughs> make sure I stay in, stay close to the machine and so on so you can see that just make this one there <laughs> great so I'm threading this through so this is one of the shoulders which has got the ribbon stabilizing ribbon attached I'm just going under my under I go under five or six threads and then just trim the ends some people might do longer that's what I do I feel like that's enough like it's not gonna if you trim it it's not gonna come out and uh, halfway up the seam will be a bit unsightly I think personally but there again it is it's all your preference really which is it's a great thing about sewing isn't it you can do things to the degree that you you want to Okay, so I've just weaved my thread end in that side and I've got two more to do on the other side and then I'll show you what that looks like. Very excited to see other people in their pink and red outfits. 
gonna be great. Just think the colors pink and red are so flattering. Um, so it always look good in one shade of pink or red, everybody would. Kind of is nice on a Galentine's weekend <laughs> to celebrate kind of the sewing friendship in the community. I think there's a lot of kind of goodwill and it's a friendly community. People who are on Instagram and YouTube just love to sew and want to share that message. Get more people into sewing. That's what it's all about. What well, is for me anyway. I'm just gonna this last one. I just want to put this back through some more rungs of my overlocking. It's kind of slipped a bit. And then I will press. Once I've pressed, I will move on to the other shoulder. Lots of thread ends. Never know what to do with my thread ends. So they're all woven in my ends. So I'm just going to take that to the machine and press. Not to the machine, to the iron. To the shoulder seams open and I'm just going to thread in so I'm going to repeat the process so those thread ends. So there we are so we've got the makings of the cocoa with our shoulder seams so I'm just going to put the dress to one side so that's on my table there. Those are my sleeves, so I won't need those until the neckband's gone in. Back to one side. So, neckband. So I need to make sure that I've got, so this is the back of my fabric and I'm putting my right sides together. And I'm just going to pin, so this holds the fabric in place really well. You can use clips, you don't have to use pins. I just use pins. on that in case it's different for the neckband so turning a page in the pattern now so we're on the funnel neckline version so fold the funnel neck piece width ways right sides together which i've done pin the short ends together and narrow zigzag zigzag stitch them together So that's my funnel neck band sewn together and overlocked with my pink stitching. Um, so you guess what probably what I'm going to do next. I'm going to take it over to the ironing board, press that open and then I'll um, sew in my uh, loose ends. So that's my pressed open neck band joined rid of all my loose threads off there and then I'll just fold that in half just 
my funnel neck pad. So excited. Right, read the, read the instructions down. Focus, don't get too excited. Right, now I'll fold the funnel neck lengthways. Wrong sides together, matching the seam lines. So they are matched. I'm not pressing it. So I tell a lie earlier, don't press it. pin the long band together at the edge. So I'll start with the seam point. So this, this side is going to go through my machine. So I'm going to pin it, pin it from this direction. Because that will be going through my sewing machine. And the next step is we're going to tack that. So I have pinned around my funnel neck band, neck, neckline, neck piece. And I'm going to tack. So I'll use a long stitch for that. I'll use the longest stitch length on my machine for straight stitch, which is five on my machine will vary. Let's say the locker thread's building up now. So one. And I'll start where the join is on my neck band. And I'll line up with the three eighths mark on my machine. Before I sew anything, I'll remove that pin. Don't need any catching there. And I've got one setting and I'm going to do the standard width, but I'm gonna make it longer so I can then pick it later if I want to. Just holding it in place for the process of joining the neckline to the neck band. to make sure it's really even as we go around which should make things easier when I do the finishing of the neck band later I'm hoping I'll be able to overlock that once it's joined to the actual dress I can have some nice pink overlocking inside my neck band so every time I look at it I can think of this little sew with me video. nice to have someone here to keep track of the questions I'm being asked. I've been watching Lisa Comfort's sew-alongs which are just fantastic and great company when you're sewing so I don't necessarily sew the same pattern as she does or even a sew over it pattern but it's nice to feel like you've got that company in lockdown because the UK is still in lockdown, if you didn't know, I'm not in the UK. So, lots and lots and lots of loose thread now all over me, which is standard procedure. And there's my funnel neck band ready to attach to the dress. I'll move that off again, so I've got some pinning to do next. I'm taking my, get rid of some more threads. 
clean clean and this here so to do this I'm going to need to open up my dress so you can see that's the back and the front there the neckband is the same depth all the way around obviously so if I just open up the dress bring the back down towards you the front towards me and pin the tack to edge of the funnel neck to the right side of the bodice neckline so what I'm actually going to do so I can match the shoulder seams up so I'm just going to notch this isn't in the pattern this is me this is my hack I'm going to just fold that in half completely look do a little notch and then that's a guide of where my other part of the shoulder lines up so I'm aligning my shoulder seam to a notch which I have made within my seam allowance it's probably about five mil pinning that in like so and then I would do the same on the other side. So that's just going my notch. Oh, two, my two seam lines are lined up, so if I just lift this up so you can see one side. So there you go. My pin is lined up, my neckline seam excuse me and my front of my neckline so I've got roughly the halfway point from the fold which is where the fabric was cut on the fold so I've got a line here which is still there, which is quite lucky. So my halfway point, I'm going to line up with that neck band. Pin this in. I'm going to have to just stretch my neckband slightly so that it fits, matches up against the edge. So this is always the bit that I find a little tricky, <laughs> is the matching up where you've got a neck band that is shorter than your whole or your neck circumference as it were actually I'm gonna do that again <laughs> lining up the two and also bearing in mind you've got a bit of a curve there just stretching the neckband kind of felt before like I might have stretched 
underneath as well as the neck band so that's why I've redone that just to be sure it may still not be quite right but it's the first one I've made with a funnel neck band and this year I promised myself to be a bit kinder to myself around selling things for the first time and them not being perfect. So, stretching my neckband, not the underneath. I'm really excited to see what this will look like on. It's perfect to wear with like tights or leggings at the moment. I'm living in warm tights and leggings right now. Stretch that neckband, but not the underneath. Okay, and I just put a few extra pins on the extreme curve of the neckline, so you'll find at the corner of the neckline you need to stretch that little bit more on the more extreme curves. And I just usually work it out by just taking my time. <laughs> so I'm going to flip, so I'm now on the back, now pinning the back which is less extreme of a curve. And there again, if I can lay the back nice and flat, then I'll be able to see where it was folded for cutting. So roughly where the middle is. my piece just about there and I want to attach it to the center of the back there and then the stretching I do will be either side as opposed to across the whole of the back because that's where you might get an uneven stretch and we don't want gaping holes in our neck band sewing but actually, I think with Conti fabric, it's actually, because it's a more stable jersey, I find it that bit easier, personally, to sew with. You also get to know kind of by sight roughly how much stretch want to be happening where um, on the neck band to make it even and then what will emerge is a nice flat we hope neat funnel neck band What's been really good practice for doing this is sewing children's sweatshirts <laughs> out of remnants. Um, so obviously the 
um, popping jazz pattern that I just finished has been a really good kind of practice. more on one side than the other which is probably not right <laughs> I just think if you just take your time and go with what feels right it's not a race Okay, so my funnel neck band is now pinned on. Just show you by holding it up, nice and pinned on. So that's the back, that's my front. So it's ready for attaching um, with a zigzag this time. Um, so I'm just gonna take my um, funnel neck band and sew it. Um, so stitch with a narrow zigzag, yeah, so that's my settings before, so just checking on that, what the settings are. So once I've sewn this neckline on, I'm going to pause and get a cup of tea. It's always good midway through a project like this to um, make sure you are refreshed, because if you're hungry and thirsty, you tend to make mistakes, as I've learned. <laughs> So after I've sewn this, I will pause and come back to you when I've got my cup of tea. So, here's my sewing machine. So I obviously I changed the stitch length. And number for the straight stitch for the tacking. So all I'm going to do now is just adjust to the 1.5 width, 2.5 length on the zigzag, which is a 10 on my machine, if you've got the same machine. What can help, and what I'll probably want to do now, is just take off that um, extension to my machine, just to make this really easy and get my neck in and I'm going to back tap at the beginning there we go go forwards and as I'm going around particularly as I'm starting in the front so just give the neck band a little stretch not a lot, just a little. Get the pins as well out as I go. Getting better at that now, remembering. And pin out. if that's getting a bit there we go nice and flat underneath as well hopefully I won't get any pulls although it can happen when you're sewing and you can't see the other side even if you do stretch the neck band a little
definitely found that when I was sewing the this coast jersey Agnes. Um, it was very difficult to make sure it was stable underneath. And I did get some pulls and I pressed and I sewed them out. It's still like a little bit of show. There again, it's the first time I've made anything with this ghost jersey. So I don't think we can be too hard on ourselves. I didn't manage to wear that one to work this week. I was hoping to, but then. I will get to wear it next week. To work is now online. <laughs> How bizarre is that? We're all adjusting to it though, aren't we? on and actually when I overlock around there I might not need to take the tacking stitches out because I'll be overlocking quite close So that's looking pretty good. Front is fine, fine, and then I've got two little pulls. The back is good, so all I'm gonna do is just unpick my little pulls. Sometimes this just happens when you're sewing a curve and it usually is in the same place. So on a curve, an extreme curve, it's like the sewing machine kind of bundles it all up because it can't quite going faster so I probably should have gone a bit slower but I'm quite thirsty which is why I didn't but anyway now I know that we can stretch the neckband to fit that area and just literally fill in the gap what we're going to do. So a quick re-sew and a bit of a press later and I've now got uh, a fully present and correct back and front um, neck band on my cocoa dress which I am really really pleased about. Um, so yeah can't wait to wear it. The neckline looks really cool. Um, so my next, well, same for my next trick, um, so the next thing I'm going to do is just overlock inside the neck band. So I'm going to move my machine out of the way and you should be able to see, so this is where the neck um, is joined to the dress and I'm going to overlock um, that as close as I can without catching um, the original seam with the zigzag, but it doesn't matter um, about the tacking stitches. I can either um, leave those in and overlock and chop them off, um, or I can just um, overlock and leave the tacking stitches in. That's my overlocking around the neckline done. So 
that's looking really cute with my pink. Um, I could have gone closer, it felt a bit risky. And also I need to put a label in and I've got some really nice labels um, of my own design that I want to pop in there. So I'm just going to leave that as like a deeper neckline, but I don't think it hurts when I dress like this because it gives it more stability. And yeah, that neckline just gets folded down once it's been pressed away. So it will look like that, so it'll be narrower. But also I quite like it up, I think it's quite nice. Um, so I'll decide when I'm wearing it what I want to do about that. So I'm just gonna do the pressing away of the funnel neck, thread more over locker ends in. And the necklines, if I can, I try and double them up because you usually have two, so you're joining two ends. It's good that they get weaved in together. Then I'm going to move on to pinning in the sleeves. Well, one at a time, because I'll be sewing one at a time. So to match these up, I need to lay out the dress front and back pieces that are joined completely flat. Let's just check, yeah, all good. So our front and back pieces have all been attached correctly. Let's hope they don't get caught on the way around. I don't like on a shoulder seam. I have got it a bit on the neckline, but because you can't see underneath when you're sewing, it's really tricky to be able to make sure that that doesn't happen. And The double notches at the back of this pattern but you're still matching up with the first notch the double notch is just to tell you that it's the back the second one so just stretching the sleeve piece slightly Make sure that all goes in okay. Sip of tea. It's thirsty work sewing, isn't it? Decided on a cup of Earl Grey. And then I'm just matching up from the notch to the sleeve. 
base, if you will, underarm. Just matching up the very end of the sleeve and pinning. And then I'm taking the whole curve and I'm pinning the centre of the curve first while it fits just right in my hands and then gradually pinning in between Move that slightly over and again underarm base of sleeve join two corners pinned first and then pin in the center In again so it's just easing in that curve so that you can sew it evenly I do use a lot of pins I've been told I use a lot of pins more than other people who sew but I do think that because I use a lot of pins I get a better finish on what I make, so it just depends what you're looking for, I guess. Is it finishing things quickly or is it making something that you wear and wear again? So, all pinned. The next step will be to sew the shoulder seam. Now, I could overlock, but because there are so many pins, I've decided I am going to sew this in the machine and then finish with the overlocker. So again, it's a 5 8 seam allowance. Just check your stitch. Mine's on 10. If you have my zigzag stitch, which is what you should be on. We're doing this from home, following along with me. It's the right way around. Okay, find pin cushion so I can just put my pins on there because there are a lot of them. Lining up with my favourite 5 8 guide. So with this many pins, I'm not putting any pressure or pulling anything, not even slightly. I 
My pins are well placed. removing my pins from the sleeve head as I'm sewing the top of the sleeve on and I've got my nice flat overlocked shoulder seams by little it's a curve this gives you a bit more accuracy as you're sewing Face of the sleeve, back tacking to secure, and done. So I've now got one lovely, lovely sleeve on. So as you can see, all that pinning, you know, that really helped because I've got no I've got no pulls I haven't had to stretch it's just all looking really good so I'm happy with that so I'm gonna go ahead and repeat that process for the other sleeve so for the next section of the pattern I will be pressing the shoulder seams open so whilst I've been finishing off the second sleeve I have just finished the seams with the overlocker um, so I've got some loose threads to thread in and then I'm also going to press the seam allowances open so at the moment it's sort of looking like a tabard with sleeves <laughs> uh, inside out and I'm going to press these seam allowances open so that they lie nice and flat it's all looking really good on the outside, on the shoulders, so I'm really pleased with that. But in order to press them correctly, I'm going to use the tailor's pressing ham um, and pop that in the sleeve. And now I've got the cordless iron, which I keep forgetting I can do this. I'm going to take the iron off the stand obviously I won't be pressing onto my plastic tablecloth and I'm going to lay my pressing cloth over the top just in case because I don't want any residual marks on my ponty and I just hold it there for 10 seconds okay and work my way up the armhole So I'm really pleased with how the armholes have come up. So 
so the iron stays hot if you keep it on there. It's a bit like uh, using a kettle. <laughs> um, it gets hot and then you can take it off and use it, but you have to remember to put it back or it goes quite cold and then you don't get the pressing you want and water comes out. So it depends really how much the cord bothers you. I got it because it was reduced in the sale and my other iron died. So it was a slight, it wasn't an upgrade because it was a, um, more powerful iron, my corded, corded iron, but I thought I would give a cordless a go. And I'm glad that I did. That's the first side pressed. Just going to do the same for the other sleeve. So I'm just going to repeat that process for the other sleeve, pressing it open where I've overlocked the seams, the front, and there are my lovely sleeves. So I'm just going to pop this on. This is what it's looking like now. And I think what I'm going to do is just do a centimetre seam allowance front and back obviously it's got it's, it's stretchy fabric but I just want to make sure that it isn't pulling too much obviously doing less exercise in lockdown and, and stuff so I'm just going to pin one side and then when I've pinned I will so, so exactly how we've sewn the side seams before and overlock to tidy up the seam and when I've done that I will um, go ahead and show you that on again with the sides sewn up so I'm just going to do some pinning it just feels really nice fit I'm going to hem it in the morning and then take photos I'm going to take up the sleeves by two centimeters tuck them under and sew a zigzag stitch around the sleeve um, and then I'll do the same um, I'll overlock them all around the edge um, that's the hem and the sleeves and then do the pressing up by two centimetres. And yeah, so it was a zigzag. So really, really pleased with that. But I do think I'm gonna let the hem hang overnight before I wear it. And I'm just going to whiz up on the overlocker, um, the two side seams together. I'll overlock those together and then press them towards the back. 